Hey there folks, Maximum Woodsman's Finest here. Welcome to another episode in the Grip to Tip series. Um, today, this is actually the first episode in um, a little mini-series I want to do, which is highlighting European voyeurs, especially because I'm obviously from Austria. But today we're actually in Switzerland, um, and I brought this puppy along. Uh, I've been pondering about how to highlight this for quite a few weeks because I'm really taken by this bow. So, um, yeah, stay tuned, and I hope you're going to enjoy this video. Cheers. So today we're actually talking about a bow by Tisa River Archery. In fact, it's called the Walking Stick um, out of Serbia by Attila, who is actually Hungarian. Um, and it's not only the first bow in this um, European Boyer series um, of my Grip to Tip series. It's also um, a new type of design or like a different design than we've had before. We've talked about all types of different designs, but this is a one piece longbow. Um, with a pretty significant forward hand design uh, deflex with lots of reflex in the limbs so it's actually marking another type of bow design that we haven't really talked about and I'm pretty excited that it's this one so spoiler alert um, the bow is amazing the craftsmanship is one of the best I've ever seen in a bow the price the value of this bow is definitely not representing how amazing the craftsmanship is uh, the value is amazing so that's just to kind of spoil the whole thing but as usually i kind of want to start with a little bit of pretext right um as well i want to apologize my my voice uh isn't too good right now sounds pretty pretty nasal because i'm still recovering from a cold um but in any regard um as you can probably hear as well in the background there is a lot of goats, sheep, cowbells all around us. We are actually really at about um, 3,000 feet, 1,000 meters high up here in the Appenzeller Mountains of Switzerland um, on holiday. But I wanted to bring this along uh, to shoot the video up here just to have a little bit of a different taste of the video and a little bit different background. All right. 56 yards. Why? Just why? How did I get to know about this boyer and how did I get to acquire this specific bow? Um, I hunt in Hungary, which is one of the only places in Europe where you can go hunt with a, with a bow, uh, traditional and compound. Um, and I've been doing this for quite a few years after literally preparing for it, I think in my mind for about 20 years. Um, and I made quite a few connections there and friends and one of them is um, the son of uh, one of the outfitters. Benze, uh, and he actually got a different bow from this boyer, which is a lot shorter and um, a little bit more extreme reflex deflex more along the lines of maybe a big stick archery gremlin or a Thunder child by big Jim just if you want to have a little bit of a comparison I think he's calling it the pathfinder and it's like 54 56 58 inches very short um, These bows are too short for me personally, so I was like just checking uh, since I really was impressed with what I've seen in that bow um, that Ben's ahead, um, I wanted to check if there is a longer one, and in fact there is. So this is the walking stick. Um, I think this is one in like three different models that Attila makes, um, and this was right up my alley. Uh, it's a 64-inch bow. Uh, like you can tell, and we're going to go over a little bit more specifically, handle forward, more deflex, reflex, deflex, um, limb design and so I just contacted him and we got talking about the whole grip to tip series um, and I ordered this bow from him and right off the bat I want to say he's been really great to work with it's definitely a small batch production a smaller one it's a one-man show um, and he's probably putting out maybe four to five bows a month not nothing crazy um, it is a side hustle, but it is still a hustle. So um, he was very, very accommodating 
and extremely transparent throughout the build. So I was able to choose of like a lot of different woods. I didn't want to go exotic or too exotic with anything except for the riser that is Shadur. But other than that, um, he gave me the choices of different types of bamboo, um, different um, veneers, etc., etc. Uh, and he was very transparent throughout the entire build. So he was checking back with me, sent me pictures and this and that. So that was amazing because in fact, I think this is the first custom bow that I ordered and, and have in my hands. There's a couple other things on the way, but this was the first time that someone really said, what do you want? So um, obviously, uh, being a craftsman myself and very detail oriented, I was pretty nervous. But um, as soon as I unpacked this, I was very, very taken by it. So again, handle forward design. Um, the riser here is very interesting in that it has quite a ton of deflex. Um, it's almost that the limbs are starting on the back of the riser, but this is a long bow. Um, it, the bow itself is very quick and I'm glad that it has this amount of deflex because it makes shooting such a quick and rather, I don't want to call it nervous design, but definitely a speed design. Uh, it needs this amount of deflex to be um, still very shootable because there's got to be a balance between speed, shootability, um, and the deflex, as we've, as we've talked about in the in the past, definitely helps with torquing, uh, which is one major issue when you have a rather light weight or like light mass weight bow, like this one. A one piece long bow is never going to be as heavy as an ILF setup, a recurve. Etc. Etc. Like a three, three piece or whatever. So having a handle forward design is going to help with that torquing issue that you're going to have on that. All right. So we're here with the walking stick by uh, Teaser River. Uh, just doing a couple bows today as I got the opportunity to shoot through Chrono. So incredible bow. Very extreme geometry in a way. Um, definitely produces quite a lot of speed. This is 64 inches. As I said, um, it is about 50 pounds at my draw and I'm shooting um, like I said before these are the, the 350 spine axes um, total weight of these is 540 grains uh, so we are right around um, nearly 11 grains per pound so 215 up front definitely a very uh, reasonable hunting setup let's see what she does 181 feet per second, 187, uh, 178, sorry, 174.8, 177.7. So I would call it somewhere around. 175, 76, something like that is definitely reasonable. These are four fletch, just for fun. Uh, I just fletch these up for the video, so it's a little bit easier to follow the arrow because usually I'm shooting wild fletching feathers, but they're just not as bright in flight. So for this video, I just fletched up this helical four fletch. 177. 174, very bad release. 176.7, 178.4. So, like again, 176, 177, something like that. Definitely reasonable. Out of a long bow, give or take a long bow. Um, people are gonna argue about that. Um, just some paracord silencers. Uh, of course, Eagle Flight Quiver on it. To it's actually silencing it a little bit more. No carbon, nothing fancy like that. So very, very decent. Now, the riser itself, lamination wise, is a very, very refined piece of craft. Let's just say it like that, just not to talk about pieces of art and stuff like that. Uh, laminations are flawless. On the entire bow, symmetries, alignments, everything is flawless along the entire build. 
let's just you know say it like that so I don't have to I will mention it probably a million times but the craftsmanship is amazing um, and I want to point it out because I've seen a lot of bows of way higher pedigree and way higher price point that did not even remotely match the precision in in this bow as far as laminations alignments etc etc it's a Shiduo riser um, I opted for something you know so, rather subdued because I wanted to hunt with this and I've, I've done that so I took it to Hungary um, probably two weeks after I got it because I was so uh, confident in shooting it uh, the fact that I didn't yet harvest anything with this bow has nothing to do with the bow but rather with my own shortcomings as a, as a hunter um, but I was very um, I was feel, feeling very good sitting with this in a tree stand and stalking with this um, because it just feels great not to have a three piece or, or an ILF setup or something like that nothing against those but there is something special about carrying something like that into the woods um, so Shadua I went then with uh, my Carter and uh, U as accents on the entire bow so um, everything is just going back and forth between this light orangey tone of the U uh, and the dark anthracite kind of colors of the of the micarta and the shadua and the riser laminations you can see there is a ton of very nice laminations on this uh, on this riser um, just to elongate the grip a little bit etc etc so not all of them are standard um, this is a rather refined deluxe type of model um, and Attila does different types of um, riser laminations that are simpler therefore of course also going to be a little bit lower in price um, but there's hardly anything that he doesn't he doesn't do so um, you can see all of the the wonderful laminations in the in the riser here and then there is an overlay he doesn't usually do um, on the uh, on the right side on the on the outside of the the window um, this was just done because I wanted to have a quite significant um, cut pass center um, just to make tuning a lot easier with all types of shafts for hunting um, and I wanted to have a really nice thumb ramp so he did another overlay of you should do um, and my Carter on the outside of the um, of the the window so usually not done like that necessarily um, this is just rather unique one here so he pointed out that this is not standard but it's kind of an extra um, but I personally like it he said he doesn't like it too much I actually find it quite fun to have this over here um, makes the, the bow extremely stable to have it cut past center that much but still have this amount of um, this amount of uh, material on the outside of the of the window Folks, let's have a look at some of the amazing details. Here you see the wedge, how it's feathered and faded just absolutely amazingly into the limbs. I mean, that by itself is an incredible piece of craftsmanship. And then I opted for some very subdued colors. Here you see green bamboo. Instead of some veneers, some exotic veneers or something, I actually went for the green bamboo on the back of the bow. The rounded uh, limb edges was also a detail that was incredible to me i've never seen that on a bow done like this before it's absolutely flawless and then on the back i wanted to have some darkened bamboo i just love the color of bamboo itself but just a little bit darkened um, i'm not even sure how this is done they might be baked they might be um, dyed somehow and then going up to the tips you can see the amazing string on this bow actually that Atle makes himself the the splice is done very very nicely fading um, and the tip design is also something that is really really well done the laminations you see there's a little bit of a reinforcement done with maple actually on the belly and then on the back uh, again this um, play with the U and the dark micarta it works really well um, and it's also really well done especially the tips above the string grooves 
I heat re reduce the weight and the material there significantly as it's not really needed for anything. Um, so there is one reason why there's absolutely no hand shock happening in this bow. You see a little bit of curly maple there as a reinforcement or just a detail actually on the belly and then several layers of bamboo followed by the tip laminations. Centering of the string or rather centering of the limbs if you will um, is perfect um, as much as I can tell with it uh, with my eyes. All right you have already seen some footage in here not only about how quick the bow actually is um, and uh, from the 3D course over in Salzburg which is actually in Austria. Just want to talk about um, the setup for a moment. I'm shooting Eastern Axis style arrows of course um, and usually it's wild fletching that um, you know I'm, I'm, I'm using to fletch them up to have them as uh, water propellant as possible and pretty but just for these videos it is a lot easier for me to show the arrow flight with these um, just bright chartreuse feathers and like four fletch with a ton of helical so it just looks like a tennis ball is flying towards the target. Um, the bow is quick, the bow is quiet, it's not n as noiseless almost as um, more traditional the, um, shaped or designed longbows but it is quiet. Um, what I found extremely helpful with this is as well, again, I've pretty much put this quiver on every bow that I own at some point. Um, super easy on and off. Um, I have the thunder, um, the, what is it called? The thunder horns, I think. Is it? I'm just getting old, I guess. Um, and the cellways and all of them, and they, they're all great quivers. I've not, not found anything as versatile, as quick on off, as noise dampening and as little messing with my um, bow balance if you will, than this Eagle Flight. Um, as well I think the base version costs about maybe 45-50 bucks or something like that. Um, best quiver for me on the market for what you're getting, uh, hands down. Like I said I've had this for 10, 11, 12 years, I don't even remember. So the bow is quiet like I said it's not silent and I just shoot a couple here into this um, into this uh, little hillside over there this is not supposed to be target shots um, these are supposed to be shots that are kind of um, giving you an idea about the, the noise or like the, the sound especially with this quiver on The only silences that I have on here is, um, if you've seen it in the video, it's these, uh, it's a paracord, but it doesn't actually fluff up as nice. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just a low quality paracord or something, but it's fun because it has these camouflage colors and it matches the beautiful green and brown string. Usually I'm not a big fan of like subdued, sorry for that, like earthy colored strings, but on this bow, I still get a nice contrast. You would think that up in the Swiss mountains you actually you have very low noise background noise issues but there is like about a million sheep over there there is another million over there and there is like helicopters and airplanes going over all the time so who would have thought it's not the perfect environment for shooting a video so, but it's a nice background so the string is really a nice contrast still against the light color on the back of my limbs. Um, I usually go with very bright colors on the ILF limbs because they usually are just black or something like that. Um, but in this case here, uh, the, the silencers are just a couple of strands of paracord. That's why I actually wanted to say. I find it to be a very low frequency thud so it's not disturbing at all um without the quiver uh, with a too light of an arrow it gets a little bit twangy um but i think that's just due to a very uh, like low strand string a pretty extreme um design on the bow but like this i have i have absolutely no issues 
is calling it a very quiet bow. And it flings an arrow. Well folks, as always, I hope you liked this video, um, you've enjoyed watching it. Uh, I'm trying to go in detail about these bows and not just give you a how great or how good pointing or how accurate the bow is or whatnot. You know my opinion about this. The bow is never accurate, you are accurate. The bow is something that can have features that might facilitate, help um, or not help with being um, more forgiving um, or more accurate in the end. But the tune can help being more accurate, uh, the way you tune the bow, the, the arrow to the bow, depending on your intent, is what makes a more forgiving setup for being accurate. But at the end of the day, it is you. So getting coaching um, and standing on about tuning, etc, etc, is what has helped me over the last nearly 30 years of shooting a bow. Um, and I've definitely learned over the last five or six significantly more about archery through the push and other platforms especially about um, through the push the podcast the courses etc etc than i've done in the entire probably about 25 years before that so um it's an incredible platform um, and i'm really honored to be part of the video content team at this point so if you if you have enjoyed this video please um like and subscribe um, to the push to my channel Woodsman's Finest where you find of course a whole lot of other information as well I'm a craftsman by trade um, I design and make knives and axes uh, I carve spoons I give online courses about spoon carving I do leather craft um, and I have an online course platform with nearly 115 hours um, of courses about sharpening carving decorating leather craft making knife sheets etc etc um, and you get it through um, my channel and the discount link down below for just five bucks for the entire first month all access so please check it out um, please support any maker out there that you like the content of because I can't even put into words how much work it actually is to continuously produce content that is informational high quality um, and so find someone that you want to support and actively do so um, thank you very much to uh, Attila as well for producing and crafting these incredible bows and let me show one of these off here um, Please check them out the links are of course below to Tisa River archery um, This is again the walking stick incredible bow uh, will never leave my household um, For any reason other than an absolute catastrophe I want to say comment down below about any archery equipment you're interested in um, and check me out on woodsmansfinest.com, Woodsman's Finest as well on Instagram and Facebook. And I hope to see you next time when another bow review comes your way.